What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Social Sig vlog. Today is Wednesday, October 23rd. Happy fall, happy October. Um, it's been a while since I last vlogged. It was September 19th, um, right before we left for the East Coast tour that I last vlogged. So uh, lots to catch you guys up on, but I'm just going to kind of keep everything short just for the sake of this video not being too long or anything. But um, crab cake is a little sleepy. He just ate his dinner. And so he says hello to the inter internet web. Um, but the East Coast tour was friggin' awesome. Lots of roller coaster uh, events that I will kind of touch on. But um, we made it back safe and sound. So it was quite an adventure. And honestly, my favorite tour that I've been on, this would be tour number four as far as like the bigger tours that I've been on and I've put together. Uh, last fall, I did uh, an East Coast tour and back. And then last winter down south last like late spring early summer went out to the west coast and then uh did the east coast again so just busy booking shows so much and playing shows um which ultimately this winter i'm really really excited to dial in and not doing any shows after november um just taking time to write music record music work on album number four because i have not had much time at all to really work on any music which feels really nice <laughs> and um, i'm also going to be bartending at falcon bowl in river west so i um, just going to be living a little bit taking some time off with uh shows but then also getting the online merch store running in november right before uh the holidays hit so y'all can get all of your social say holiday merch um i just placed a big order of t-shirts today um bringing back the thrasher designs with the hoodies um which i know have been a, a very uh sought out item so um yeah lots of lots of cool stuff to announce on socials i guess in the coming weeks here but just finishing up the next five shows um doing uh, backyard Halloween show in uh, like the near the Marquette campus on Friday. Uh, super pumped for dressing up as the Wiggles, which I have an Amazon delivery coming real soon with a yellow shirt. I went to Walmart and got this yellow shirt shirt, but decided that it was a little bit too like highlighter green. So I'm I'm the yellow Wiggle. Um, so that's gonna be a lot of fun, and then. And then November 15th, we're doing Milwaukee again at Falcon Bowl, which is the place where I'm about to be bartending. Super cool, historic building that's being renovated and a lot of cool new energy is going into it with a new general manager who I'm buddies with and um, a lot of, lot of cool stuff. So I got an orientation tonight um, later just to, to meet some other coworkers and go through some, some, some first work stuff i guess orientation stuff um so excited for that and then uh appleton the next day on november 16th madison uh back on thursday november 21st and then west bend we're doing a debut uh homecoming hometown debut debut show at the bend theater west bend is where i grew up it's about 40 minutes north of milwaukee here uh, with Micah Emmerich and Duane, who are both Milwaukee musicians who I went to high school with. So we're all coming back to West Bend day after Thanksgiving. So if you guys are in town trying to catch all the homies home for Thanksgiving, um, it's going to be epic. Uh, we we're already at 44 pre-sales for that one, but I think people are just solidifying their Thanksgiving plans and I'm going to be sending out some text messages to some old friends. So that one's going to be a blast and then taking my winter hiatus and going into winter hiatus and it's going to be fun um looking forward to that a lot and then to talk about the tour the last month of my life has been uh quite like lots of challenges that we overcame and i'm just super super proud um about crab cake and sheila and myself for how we handled everything and um it turns out like as, as like seamless as the other tours have kind of felt like having all these van issues and 
kind of having a lot of unknowns kind of made ha, made us have like a lot more stories to tell in the grand scheme of things um and i feel like i'm gonna look back at this one and be like whoa that was like a really cool run so um we were on the road for 24 days we left september 20th we got back on october 14th uh which ironically last year we got back from the East Coast tour on October 14th, and that was the same day that we picked up Crab Cake from the Humane Society. So we've had Mr. Crab Cake for one full year. Very excited. Um, very excited. Uh, very uh, happy that we have him in our lives. So it's been the best year of both of our lives, for sure, is what we talked about. So having this little guy around just makes everything so much brighter and more fun. So um Yes, so we left on that Friday for a show in Fort Wayne. Um, and going into it, this tour just really crept up on Sheila and I, um, mainly me because this is kind of my thing. But like I need I should have went into it having a lot more of the places we were going to stay booked um like as far as hotels or just like reaching out to friends uh, asking if we could crash and um didn't have everything solidified we didn't know what we were gonna do um for a few dates of it i was still trying to put together a date in florida maybe atlanta and maybe char charlotte north carolina and it just crept up really fast and i didn't have those solidified but pretty much had everything around it set in stone and um, other than the, the housing. So anyways, we it was a little stressful going into the road, spent that Friday packing up the van and making sure we had everything. Um, and it felt like real, real good going into it or better going into it than the West Coast one because we knew how, um, like how Crab Cake was going to do on the road. So that was kind of cool. And we already kind of were used to that whole thing. And also we were able to to not bring as much stuff as last time because we knew what we needed and what we didn't need. And we had a lot more space in the van. Um, he's like falling asleep. He's so, so cozy. Um, so yes, we left that Friday afternoon, like 30 minutes after leaving, we uh, had the check engine light come on, on the, the minivan that I just bought in May um check engine light went on so i was like oh my god let's just pull over and get it checked out at an auto zone because you can just do that and um, they have a reader at auto zones a little uh tidbit fact for anybody in the future but um got it scanned it was like a transmission issue um i don't know much about cars at all but the transmission seems to be a big deal and got it checked out. And they said that they just gave me the reading. They didn't really give me a diagnosis or anything. And so then we were driving back to the highway um, to get back on the road. And then we got T-boned by a distracted driver. We were going straight and she was turning, she was on her right side, turning left. And she basically just hit the back right wheel of the minivan and at that moment, I literally thought, like, the tour is over. There's no way, like, I'm going to have to figure out, like, maybe renting a van. Just, like, the tour is done. Like, there's no way. I was, it was very, very stressful. Popped out. We were pulled over and got out of the car. I looked at it, and it just looked, like, really, really bad. Um, but went over to the other driver she was okay she had a kid in the car um but had the police come and like just give us a statement or give us a um a case number and stuff so got it all handled and luckily we were able to still drive it and then we drove back to sheila's mom's house who lives in north shore chicago so it was kind of on the way um but in the moment like everything was just unfolding like could we drive it could we not drive it do we need to like call triple a um, but Chilo's stepdad is like, a, knows a little bit more about cars. So we were able to drive it. Um, just had a big piece of plastic stuck, stuck in between the rim and the tire. And it was just a lot to handle. So she got, got to Sheila's, uh, moms and canceled, uh, the, or the show, or at least, um, told the venue that we weren't going to be able to be there. 
And so everything was all good. Um, next morning, took it into the tire shop. It still held air overnight. Um, took it into the tire shop. Had to replace both the back uh, tires and got it re-leveled, I guess. Like, got it straightened out as far as the realignment. I don't know if I really needed it or not, but it was like 750 bucks right off the bat, which was pretty stressful, but I have, like, emergency like savings saved up so um just kind of kept it rolling like especially when you're in like tour mode like we had nine shows in a row the first nine days so um there's really no time to like not keep going which is kind of fun um and then let's see we went to speeding forward we went to ann arbor ann arbor was awesome for like a first show Everyone there was super nice. The crowd was like going super hard and I was kind of just like all pent up and kind of angsty a little bit from everything going on. Um, so rocked out at Ann Arbor. We slept in the car that night and then we drove to Beaver Falls where we had a hotel where I played Beaver Falls on the run last time, um, which was at the local 724 studio. Saw all those guys again. Uh, Marble Teeth, my buddy from central Illinois, one of my favorite projects. He was had a show fall through on that date, so we got him to join on the bill, so it was really good to see him. Um, then we did Pittsburgh on that Monday. We slept at my buddy Eli's place, who I met on tour last year. Um, played in a place called Viva Los Tacos with a band called 957, and they were a bunch of sweethearts, and I'm really excited to listen to their music when it comes out. Uh, and then we had like a nine-ish hour drive from Pittsburgh to Cambridge, where we did uh, my first show with Staring in Spaces. I did five shows with them down the coast. They're out of DC and they're some friends of mine. And I did three shows with them last year. We did New York, Philly, and DC. And so, or we did DC, Philly, and New York. And this year we wanted to expand on that. Um, I love them to death. They are so, such great human beings. Um, and we just had a blast. So it was really good to see them, uh, in Boston after everything. And, um, and they're just also helpful and, and kind. So, um, that was really nice. Played at the Cantab Lounge near Harvard University. Uh, had some very delicious New York pizza. Also, we had pizza 11 of the 24 nights on the road, which we both say, me and Sheila, we could keep eating more. Uh, we just love pizza that much, and it's so good. It just really is so good. And so slept at a place called the Farrington Inn in Cambridge uh, or Boston, and then did New Haven at a place called Cafe Nine. Shout out Aaron of IRS Booking who got me on that show. Um, played at yeah, Cafe Nine, and this dude named Patty is the owner, and he's like the coolest dude ever. Super nice. He gave us free pizza. <laughs> Uh, checked out some of uh, New Haven has some of the world's best pizza is what they say. So uh, we got Frank Pepe's and Sally's a pizza. And we just got the cheese for both of them. Just wanted to get the real basic pizza. Um, and uh, the cheese pizza at Frank Pepe's was much better than Sally's. That's my opinion. Frank Pepe's pizza in New Haven. So good. Um also, uh, rewinding a bit to Pittsburgh, <laughs> like realizing I'm going through every single date, uh, but this is just a very brief like overview of, of the tour. There was so much that happened in between, but uh, Pittsburgh or in Beaver Falls was really close to Pittsburgh. So the morning of Pittsburgh, um, we tried to get the van diagnosed with the check engine light, like wasn't sure if like we should keep driving or like needed to get it like worked on with the check engine light and the transmission stopped by like three shops and they were just like yeah we we can't look at it and then i called this one they're like yeah bring it in we're familiar with this issue like we'll take a look at it so uh stopped by this really kind of just this shop in somewhere in pennsylvania dude looked at it he said it wasn't leaking which was good and so um, he said you could get it worked on, but it would take like two days and $3,000. So we're just like, fuck it. Let's just keep going and see how long we go until the van doesn't go anymore. And um, he was saying, and the other mechanics all said like, 
yeah, keep you can keep driving it, but it's gonna stop running at, at some point. So we're just like, okay, that's kind of nice to know, but um, yeah, damn. So not much that we could have done. So we just kept going. Um, and turns out we made it home and the check engine light is still on to this date. So um, still gotta get it into a shop or something, but um, just wanna get it looked at. Should be fine though. <laughs> Um, and it's not driving weird. It's not shifting weird. So who fucking knows, dude? Um, and I have some insurance claims going through or in insurance claims. So, um, yeah, that was just what I had to deal with around this time of tour. Um, New York then, uh, we drove to New York on the way from New Haven to New York. We ran over something in the road or all of a sudden, we just heard like doo -doo 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 on one of the tires. Maybe it was the engine pulled off and then checked it out in a parking lot. And there was a bolt with a washer in it uh, in the front left tire, uh, not the two that we just replaced. Um, so brought it to a tire shop. They fixed it on the spot. It was like 250 bucks. So we're down like almost a grand uh just on car stuff like not even a week into this tour so that was sorry y'all my phone just ran out of storage so um had to delete some stuff but um we played manhattan that night stayed in manhattan with our friend robbie uh played the bowery electric it was an awesome show um probably like 150 maybe 125 people were there it was just such a fun show um i love manhattan so much it was probably my favorite city all of tour it's just such a vibrant city there's just all walks of life i, I can definitely see myself living there one day oh and i think maybe my amazon package is here so i don't don't want that to get stolen so i'm gonna go grab it cool just got my package um so where was i i think i'm just gonna like just speed through these um and if that's okay but uh, New York was sweet, then we went to Philly, then Washington DC, we played a sold out show at The Pocket, that was my favorite show all of tour, um, it's hard to pick a favorite, but literally that, that show was just so much fun with the Staring in Spaces guys, and uh, Washington DC is really nice, and um, just felt really good there, and then went to Norfolk, Virginia to stay with uh, some friends for two nights who just moved there, and then went to Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia after that. And then we shot over to Atlanta to stay with our friends Jack and Jelly. And then the next day we went up with them to uh, Jack's parents' place in Northern Georgia. Um, they built a house there. They are building a house there and they're living there and it's just super pretty up there. It's kind of like up North Wisconsin. We got to go jet skiing and just hanging out. Um, so didn't have a show for an entire week. This was like a nice like week chunk where we were just like kind of on vacation um, in Atlanta and then northern Georgia and then went up to Tennessee near Gatlinburg the, by the Smoky Mountains where my friend Ryan uh, currently lives and she works at the Old Smoky Distillery where we got uh, moonshine tasting from her. We walked around Gatlinburg. We saw some black bears uh, in the wild, which was crazy. And then... Uh, saw the Smoky Mountains, super cool, like eerie feeling uh, in the area. Um, I learned that those are like the some of the oldest like mountain ranges in the world ever. Um, and they're cool because they have like that haze over them. Um, and then after staying with them, we went up to Cincinnati where we stayed with my friend Time for two nights. Did a show at Sitwell's Coffee. Um, it was super good to see Time and Cincinnati is a really cool city. Uh, and then Columbus uh, did Donato's Basement. We walked around the the Ohio State University campus and um, played with some cool bands there. And then Cleveland, Ohio did uh, the Beach Park Rock Fest with um, like 10 other bands from like the Midwest area. So it was a really cool show that Kevin of Mid Park put together. Shout out Mid Park. Um, he put that all together and it was really sweet to meet a bunch of Cleveland bands and then uh, some Chicago bands too. So really cool event. Then we got back home on 
um, the 14th, uh, stayed overnight at Sheila's mom's again on the 13th, and then drove back to Milwaukee. So um, it went all good. It was like such a such a cool trip. I literally have so many memories from so many of these places, and um, it was just really cool. So really excited to to see a lot of these folk again. Um, next year is when I'm going to be hit. Actually, no, in, uh, in March, this is kind of big, but it's not announced yet. I'm doing a tour with Pretoria. They're a band based out of Chicago slash Grand Rapids. They just moved to Chicago from Grand Rapids. Um, really cool band and their booker reached out and what they want to do like a, uh, joint tour with Social Sig, Pretoria, 10 days in March. So going to be doing that. Uh, she, it's going to start with Milwaukee, Grand Rapids, and then we're looping back to Chicago, and then we're going to Pittsburgh, and then doing New York, D.C. with the Staring in Spaces guys again, and then um, trying to do Philly, um, well, Philly, then D.C., and then do Cincinnati again, and I believe Nashville, and uh, some maybe another day. I think Nashville's the last one, and then we're going to be back home, so... Might do that with the full band. I think I'm going to do the first three dates with the full band and then do the rest of it solo. I really, really liked how the solo set felt this tour. Like, really got into a lot of the sets or all of the sets and just felt really comfortable with it all. And the more I kind of tweak the set and, like, change the songs up and add some cool stuff in between, I think the more of an immersive show, Social Sig show, it will be. So I feel like it's still in the baby phases um, but I already can confidently say that it's like t like a tier of a show that I can that I can feel good about to um, for anyone watching. Um, and I've got I got a lot of compliments about it all. So um, that's really cool to to know. But the next shows, the ones I mentioned earlier, they're, these are all full band. And then, like I said, hitting the winter hiatus, bartending at Falcon Bowl. Come say what up. Uh, mainly just the main events getting the online merch store set up and then yeah just working on album number four i'll probably start vlogging more regularly maybe um and uh yeah more cool things to come so thanks for watching guys i really appreciate you guys following along with social sig and all of your support um it feels very very surreal that i can see the world uh just by doing music and it's just always been a dream of mine so Thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, watching this long and supporting this long as you have been. And um, I've been working really, really hard at this all. So I'm really happy to see it pay off. And um, yeah, I just want to keep doing this forever as far as far as I can go until until I don't want to do it anymore. Um, one of a quote that my dad always says, he's probably watching this, but the day I retire is the day I don't want to go to work. And um, I feel very, very similar to uh, this social sig project. So um, all the love. Thank you guys. Happy Halloween. And uh, see you at maybe one of these shows before I go into hibernation. So love yous. Bye.